Magic within the Marvel Cinematic Universe has always been an interesting topic to me since it was first introduced in Phase 1. And since then, the powers and abilities of magic users within the Marvel Cinematic Universe have grown to the point where these magic users are able to warp reality at a whim. In this video, I will be detailing my top 10 most powerful magic users in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I will be taking into account standard equipment, total power, amount of spells, and versatility of the user spells, etc, etc. However, I will not be giving Doctor Strange or the Ancient One the Time Stone, as it has been destroyed by this point, and the Ancient One never really used it. So this is just going to be magic against magic. Additionally, I will not be including any Asgardians like Lorelei, Loki, Frigga, or Odin, as I plan to make a top 10 video for Asgardians at another time. So with that being said, let's first get into the honorable mentions. First in the honorable mentions is Agamotto, and not really much is known about the first Sorcerer Supreme, but we do know that he founded the Masters of the Mystic Arts, created the Eye of Agamotto to house and protect the Time Stone, and may have erected the magical barriers which keep Dormammu at bay. Second is Ebony Maw. While at a first glance you may think, since the Prelude comic. So with the honorable mentions out of the way, let's begin the list, and at number 10, we have Carl Mordo, who unfortunately doesn't get to show off much during his one brief appearance in Doctor Strange. While he is a master of the mystic arts and assists with the training of the future Sorcerer Supreme, Mordo hasn't really gotten his chance to shine just yet. His most impressive feat thus far is draining the magic from Pangborn, who he felt was misusing the mystic arts for personal gain, something that he despised about about the Ancient One. At number 9 is Wong, Doctor Strange's trusty sidekick and confidant. Wong, having made multiple appearances within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, has more to work with than Mordo, and Wong has shown the ability to hold his own in various battles throughout his time as a sorcerer. He assisted Tino Minoru, Daniel Drum, and Kaecilius with the retrieval of the Staff of One, was able to sever the arm of Call Obsidian, and could even erect barriers strong enough to absorb the heavy fire from Thanos' flagship. This is especially impressive considering how much damage these missiles dealt. They were able to obliterate leviathans and even break apart Spider-Man's nanite iron spider armor, which could endure punches from Thanos himself. Coming in at number 8 is the Zealot Kaecilius. Kaecilius is a master of the mystic arts beyond the power that Wong or Mordo could muster. He was considered a prodigy by the Ancient One, and Kaecilius rightfully believed himself to be more powerful than any sorcerer other than the Ancient One herself. After performing the first ritual of Cagliostro, Kaecilius was branded with Dormammu's Dark Dimension brand and was given power by the multiversal being, which amplified Kaecilius' already formidable strength. Neither Wong nor Mordo could hope to stand against Kaecilius with his newfound power, especially within the Mirror Dimension, where he could fold reality at his will. His unpredictability paired with his ruthlessness even allowed him to kill the Ancient One. Although, I'm pretty sure he would get bullied in a straight 1v1 contest, as we saw during the opening sequences of Doctor Strange. At number 7, I have Agatha Harkness. Agatha is a witch who was a member of her mother's Salem Witch Coven. Accused of practicing dark magic, she was put on trial and found guilty. Her mother, Avonora, along with the other witches of the coven, attempted to execute Agatha with their magic, but Agatha turned their power against them. Agatha would then live her life in relative obscurity until she discovered the Scarlet Witch, who contained a power that she coveted. 
Using her high level of magic, she is a formidable match for the Scarlet Witch, able to live within the reality warping hex without being affected, and her bag of spells is very, very deep. She can manipulate the minds of her enemies, transmute matter, enchant various objects granting her control over someone's will. She can create lifelike illusions, she can teleport, fly, use her magic as a telekinetic ability, fire dark magic energy beams, and even drain magical energy from another magic user. Even the extremely powerful and highly volatile chaos magic wielded by the Scarlet Witch could be absorbed by Agatha Harkness. Agatha is very powerful, and her feats are somewhat relative to what Wong is able to do. However, what we've seen from Agatha makes her far more versatile than Wong is, so I believe she should be above him on the list. At number 6, we have a character who most of you probably aren't that familiar with. Nico Minoru. Nico is an interesting case, as out of every magic user on the list, she is the least experienced by far. However, she's extremely talented and has arguably the most powerful magical relic at her side. Using the Staff of One, Nico can do just about anything she can dream up. With it, she can control the elements, create powerful barriers, induce sleep, completely immobilize her enemies, warp reality, erase memories, etc, etc. As I said, the power of the staff is nearly limitless, and if used incorrectly, it could even collapse reality in on itself. However, Nico is at her most powerful when channeling the power of Dormammu and his Dark Dimension. While in this amplified state, all of her spells become much more powerful, and with the staff, she can simply teleport her enemies into the Dark Dimension, which would be an instant win against almost anyone within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. In Season 3 of The Runaways, there is a time skip, and during this time, Nico trained with a master of the mystic arts and learned to perform magic traditionally without the help of the Staff of One, and became much, much more powerful during this time. Nico's raw, untamed Dark Dimension amplified power mixed with the versatility and power of the Staff of One should be enough to defeat anyone below her. As I mentioned previously, many of the characters we've already listed struggled with another novice who used the Staff of One less skillfully than Nico ever did. Just above Nico at number 5 is her mother, Tina Minoru, who is a master of the mystic arts and was trained by the Ancient One alongside Wong and Kaecilius. She obtained the Staff of One sometime after it was brought to Kamertaj, and Tina quickly mastered the Ancient Relic. Eventually, Tina was contacted by Morgan Le Fay, who convinced her to steal the relic, which she did. However, she did not give it to Morgan, but kept it for herself and fled to Kamertaj. Tina would eventually settle down, however, she continued to use the staff and simply told others that it was a piece of advanced tech that allowed her to perform quote-unquote magic. Of course, being a master of the mystic arts and being armed with the Staff of One, Tina would have a distinct advantage over other masters like Wong, Kaecilius, and Mordo. Additionally, she would be more practiced and knowledgeable and skilled than her daughter, despite the fact that Nico could receive amps from the Dark Dimension. So for these reasons, I believe she would be more than a match for anyone below her. Tina is even able to read the Darkhold, and while doing so, she found a spell that could banish the very powerful Morgan Le Fay, which we'll talk about here in just a minute. Coming in at number 4 is the Ancient One, and now we're really getting into the heavy hitters. So, the Ancient One is insanely powerful, even more so than what is apparent during the events of Kaecilius' Rebellion. I have an entire video discussing the immense power of the Ancient One, and for the most detailed breakdown of her power, I recommend checking that video out, but I'll summarize that here. The Ancient One likely has complete knowledge and mastery of each and every spell within the library of Kamertaj. After all, she was the Sorcerer Supreme who lived lifetimes studying and perfecting both the martial and mystic arts. Her unrivaled knowledge of magic, as well as the relics within Kamertaj, gives her an immense advantage over each character listed prior. Not to mention her mastery over the Astral Form, being able to not only control her own, but send the Astral Form of others out of their bodies and into other dimensions. Additionally, the Ancient One draws power from the Dark Dimension as well, and can control this power and bend it to her will, unlike Kaecilius or Nico, who are simply slaves to Dormammu's power. 
With this power, the Ancient One could fold cities and distort reality at her will within the Mirror Dimension. And while Kaecilius could do this as well, the Ancient One's power dwarfs Kaecilius's. Due to the Ancient One's vast arsenal of high-level spells, mastery of magical relics, the ability to resist Dormammu's intrusions while drawing power from his dimension, her complete control over the Mirror Dimension, and unrivaled skill in an ancient and lost martial art, there is no doubt that the Ancient One deserves to be in the top five. So number three might be the most controversial placement, but I think this is where Doctor Strange maxes out as of the recording of this video. Stop. He's become a fully-fledged Sorcerer Supreme, and there's no denying that. His eidetic memory, paired with the thousands of loops he spent with Dormammu, as well as the millions of attempts to defeat Thanos, give him much more experience than what you'd think at a glance. The Russo state that Strange became much, much more powerful between his solo film and Infinity War, and became one of the most powerful beings in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I think that his power only continued to increase during Infinity War. The Ancient One even states that Strange is meant to become the best sorcerer in the history of the Masters of the Mystic Arts, surpassing Agamotto and even the Ancient One herself. Even without the Time Stone, Doctor Strange was able to go blow for blow with Thanos, who had to use all four of the Infinity Stones he had at his disposal to defeat Doctor Strange. Without the Power Stone and Space Stone, Thanos had no counter to the Mirror Dimension. Without the Power Stone and Soul Stone, he had no counter to Doctor Strange's duplication spell while using the Eldritch Whip. And without the Reality and Space Stones, he would have been unable to close the distance between himself and the Sorcerer Supreme. While Doctor Strange has already surpassed the Ancient One by the time of Endgame, there are two magic users who I believe are more powerful than the Sorcerer Supreme. The first of those is Morgan Le Fay, and I know you may be thinking, who the hell is Morgan Le Fay? But Morgan is no joke, and I do have an entire video going into great detail about each and every ability she has, but just like the Ancient One, I'll do my best to summarize. Tina Minoru outright states that Morgan is too powerful to contend with. As we know, Tina is a master of the mystic arts with thousands of spells at her disposal. She battled against the Staff of One, an ancient relic whose power dwarfs that of most masters such as Wong and Kaecilius. And at one point, Morgan is stated to be even more powerful than the Staff of One itself. The Staff of One has the power to warp reality and gives the user power above the scale of any other ancient relic that we've seen. Kaecilius even notes that the staff contains power beyond the comprehension of some magic wielders, and it took four masters of the mystic arts to contend with someone who couldn't use it to its fullest potential. With that in mind, Tina at this point would likely know the full potential of the staff. She is a master of the mystic arts who has been using it for decades, and concedes that Morgan is simply too powerful to be affected by the reality warping staff. Morgan has the ability to nullify the negative effects of the Dark Dimension as well, able to resist becoming a mindless one despite being there for thousands of years. Like Agatha, she can enchant objects to control others. She can protect herself from being controlled, can manipulate the elements, can teleport, heal herself as well as others, and control time, being able to stop it whenever she pleases and seemingly has a resistance to time manipulation as well. As we know, the Dark Dimension is beyond time, however, Morgan could operate normally within the Dimension without the use of the Time Stone, which Doctor Strange used to introduce time to Dormammu. Not to mention she has access to the Darkhold for a significant amount of time. The Darkhold contains infinite knowledge, and she used it to expand her power and abilities throughout the centuries to help her become one of the most powerful sorcerers in the Marvel Cinematic Universe's history. And at number one is, of course, the Scarlet Witch, Wanda Maximoff. So I don't think this is any shock to anybody, but the Scarlet Witch, foretold to surpass the Sorcerer Supreme himself, is easily the most powerful magic user within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like with the Ancient One and Morgan Le Fay, I do have a dedicated video on Wanda, but let's get into why she is the most powerful here. Of course, Wanda is more powerful than Thanos, and even relative to the Mad Titan in hand-to-hand -hand combat. 
while using her powerful chaos magic, Wanda has the ability to create matter, cast various hexes, protection spells, use her magic telekinetically, manipulate minds, and even free minds from the influence of the Mind Stone. She can teleport, manipulate the elements, control time within the hex, completely warp reality itself on a larger scale than we've ever seen. She can bestow and take away powers, and after embracing her role as the Scarlet Witch, she can even transmute and control powerful magic users such as Agatha Harkness. After taking the Hex down, Wanda comes into possession of the Darkhold and is now studying its infinite knowledge to help her gain a vast arsenal of traditional magical spells and abilities that other sorcerers such as the Ancient One and Morgan Le Fay have been casting for centuries. In just the short amount of time that she has had the Darkhold, Wanda was able to learn how to project her astral form and still use her body, unlike the other masters of the mystic arts whose bodies are left vulnerable while projecting their astral forms. With the Darkhold, Wanda's potential is limitless, and if she continues to grow more and more powerful, I think there's nothing that will be able to stop her. So those are my top 10 most powerful magic users within the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you disagree, there's no need to be a dick. Just leave a comment and I'll be sure to reply. If you want to have a more in-depth discussion with me on this topic, be sure to follow me on Twitter or join our Discord. I'd be more than happy to hop in a call with you and expand on any claims that I make in this video. With that being said, remember to like and subscribe. It does really help us out tremendously. And remember the motto, it's Scarlet witch over everything, and I'll see you guys next time.